Uh, but but I want to start the, from the uh, introduction. You know, I'm not going to read the paper. You, know, you, you you read the paper, but but let's look at what motivated the uh, common. Okay. And uh, uh, according to him, uh, this entire development, this this uh, this uh, uh, work, you know, is most famous for 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 uh, general theory of control system. It patterned after the theory of information by Shannon. Okay, so so that that's use that uh, as an opening, and let's see uh, uh, if we can uh, uh, understand better. Right. And he mentioned several times we thus uh, class, classify Shannon's result as belonging to the pure theory of communication and control, while everything else can be labeled as the applied theory. The technology reflects well-known distinction between pure and applied physics and, uh, and mathematics. Right. I believe there's uh, uh, the, the roots of the uh, uh, theory uh, priority gap is right here. It's happening right at the beginning of this uh, 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 paper. Right? In communication uh, theory, if, if, if Kahneman wants to do that for the control theory, let me show you where he fell short. Right? Then, then we realize what is missing in control theory. Maybe then we realize uh, where, the, uh, uh, where, where the gap between theory and uh, 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 practice originated. Right? So this is a, a paper I was talking about. This is a, a, a professor of communication from uh, Stanford University, a very well-known uh, scholar. Uh, let's hear from him uh, what uh, uh, Shannon did to his field. Uh, so you can read all that articles, but let's, let's, let's cross-reference cross those uh, uh, pieces. <laughs> those pieces with this. This is from, uh, from a website. This is uh, uh, it's called Quantum uh, Magazine. Uh, let me, uh, I, I, I printed uh, uh, the website uh, using a PDF. So the order is not quite, uh, quite right. So you can go back to the, uh, to, to, to the website to see probably more clearly, but I want to be able to mark on it. So, so I generate a, a, a uh, a, a PDF, right? So science seeks the basic laws of nature. So, so let me ask you, what is the basic basic laws of control? Now, if if control is is a branch of science, or at least a, a branch of engineering science, what is the basic laws of, of control? Don't tell me feedback. Feedback is just a, a metaphor for uh, from a communication engineer. So these are things that, that right off bat <laughs> that, that, that put a mark on put a mark on mark on this science six. This is what we're look uh, uh, we're after I, 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 on a foundation of any science control science included or cybernetics included. This is what we're looking for. If we are if we are if we miss the basic law of control, of course, our theory will be uh, built will be built on the on the, on the, on the, what they call the, uh, 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 sand. Okay. Mathematics searches uh, for new theorem to build up on the old, engineering build system to solve human needs. It's a very, very, very nice uh, uh, take on, 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 on science, on, uh, is it science, on mathematics, on engineering. The three disciplines are interdependent but distinct. So, so did we make a distinction between the science of control and engineering of control or, or the, the, the mathematics of control, or engineering of control? Very rarely does one in individual simultaneously make central contribution to all three. <laughs> but Shannon did. So, so uh, we are in the state of where we are because we are we we didn't have any anyone close to be a Shannon, not even close. And when when Carmen tried to mimic Shannon, Carmen didn't have 
didn't have the uh, the tools. Karma is a mathematician. Karma satisfies uh, uh, this middle requirement. He actually created a theorem uh, with three, two, two other uh, uh, scholars uh, with his name on it. But this is his common scientist. I doubt it. Is a, a common engineer? Certainly not. There you go. There you there lies the problem. So let's see what the uh, uh, what Shannon uh, 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 is uh, um, made of. This is uh, this is a, a, a regular guy. Grew up in Michigan. Went to University of Michigan and studied electrical engineering. <laughs> Sounds familiar. This is a guy who had a bachelor degree in electrical engineering, just like you do. <laughs> and uh, his master's thesis, not to mention his other work. By the time he finished his master's thesis, he changed the world. His master's thesis connect Boolean algebra, actually formal logic, if I may add, with, with switching circuit, the relays that he uh, uh, studied and he was familiar with in his undergraduate study. Okay. But that was just an uh, undergraduate uh, uh, double E course material. There's no science behind it. <laughs> At that time, <laughs> in early 1900, these are just a bunch of uh, try and error arts. Yeah. But he made it into science because he re recognized the connection between formal logic, which is a, a branch of, uh, of, a, of a, a philosophy <laughs> even. Right? And he connected that to, uh, to electrical engineering. So this is a, a, a person right off bat, he has a mathematical mind, he has a philosophical mind, but he's also a very, very competent engineer. So he's able to make connections. It's all about making connections. Yeah. So I hope this discussion also give you some ideas on your research. Let's, let's take a look at a, 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 a researcher of the highest rank. Almost no one surpasses him in the field of, uh, or in the intersections of the field of uh, engineering, mathematics, and science. I don't see anybody surpass, uh, surpassing him in the past, in the, in the, in the current time, or, or in the future. Okay. This is a, a, a truly a genius. Okay. But we can all get uh, inspirations from this guy. Okay. We can uh, see how he did it. Okay. And we can, uh, this is what I mean, uh, when I printed from the website, this uh, uh, this uh, caption on the on, on, on the figure on the, on the photo, but not very clear. Okay. Uh, so 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 talking about the basic laws, you first you have to recognize the basic problem, and that's that's a signature of many great scholars grasp the essence of the problem, and he to him the essence of the problem in communication is uncertainty. Coincidentally, the essence to control engineering is also uncertainty. But it was not in there in the Kalman's general theory of control. That general theory of control premise is premised on accurate mathematical model. There was no uncertainty in that model, linear time invariant model. And did, did you uh, 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 talk about uncertainty when you uh, talk about uh, controllability, observability? No, if the parameters are, are uncertain, all those abilities goes out the window. So, so he recognized very early on that uh, the problem of communication and the problem of, uh, so, so he, here, here is a, a true scientist at work. Uh, he, his observation, shifted communication problem from physical to the abstract. The writer of this uh, article is, is also a, 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 a highly uh, competent um, scholar. And he, 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 uh, he noticed 
uh, the greatness of Shannon, and he put it in common words. You know, we talk about put the idea down in words. He, he, he was right on the money when he uh, uh, summarized uh, the talents of uh, Shannon. And Shannon was able to go from the physical to the abstract. A lot of the uh, people in our field are unable to do it. Right off bat, Daniel can uh, can verify this. Yeah. Uh, uh, what was not able to go from the physical to the abstract. In fact, uh, uh, James Watt had no interest in the abstract at all. He didn't care what, what is the oper operating principle of a flyball governor. Uh, he just to make it work. Uh, he worked with a business partner, form a company, sell steam engine, make a lot of money. That's it. Edison, same thing. He didn't care whether or not the, uh, there's a mathematics behind it. Just uh, make the inventions for the market that he can see. So those two are not scientists. And this is a truly scientist. A scientist goes not, not only make it work, but also bring it to the level of abstraction. And he modeled uncertainty using probability. And at that time, the, communica the communication engineers, the Bell Lab engineers, had no idea that they could use probability, the, the theory of probability in mathematics, to solve their problem. And that's that's all due to Shannon. Right? And based on the probability theory, he, he is able to determine the fundamental limit of communication. So let's think about it. What is the fundamental, li fundamental limit of control? Did common establish that? If, if you copy uh, uh, Shannon, copy this. Co copy his ability to take something physical and bring to the abstract level. Copy his ability to, to expose the fundamental limitations of control. And it was nowhere uh, uh, there in common theory in 1960 or any time afterward. You talk about the uh, uh, questioning. You talk about reflection. This is what we're talking about. You, you, you go, you read uh, the IEEE control system magazine, you look at the all, all those glowing, glowing uh, uh, essays commemorating uh, his work. And Carmen really uh, did uh, make contribution to the, uh, to the field, but also he, uh, in my opinion, he misled the field because, because he had the fundamental deficiencies in the uh, Department of Science and in the Department of Engineering. Uh, that's almost like an indictment. Nobody dare to say this because uh, uh, like Charles Ross, when you say the emperor has no clothes, you're done. <laughs> you're out of the door. <laughs> you, have, you, can, you, have, you, have, you have no chance of sustaining an academic career. So he uh, spent three years uh, as an assistant professor, and he left. He left. <laughs> By the time um, uh, I got there, I, I was asking my uh, department chair uh, whether I, whether or not I, I can uh, uh, ask uh, uh, Dr. Roars to be my thesis advisor. My, de my, my department chair, I still remember to this day, said very dismissingly, Roars is a businessman. This is what he said. He is a businessman. <laughs> in, the, in the academic world, businessman is a dirty word. <laughs> I can relate to this. I, I know uh, what each word means in this article. Yeah. I wasn't able to, you know, earlier in my career, but this rings bell to me now. So, so look at the, the fundamental limits of communication Shannon established. And that's the beginning of a science of communication or, or a theory of information. Okay. And then the uh, uh, the author talk about the, the three parts. Three parts to uh, to the fundamental limit. Are you are you listening to me? Does it make sense? Is this helpful? Or are you guys playing games? <laughs> 
video games. <laughs> anyway, one way or another, let me tell you what I think. <laughs> and this is good stuff. So in terms of fundamental limits of communication, look at how Shannon established. And then you can think about what Common and his followers failed miserably to do. Right. So first concept is the entropy entropy rate, yeah, the rate of uh, uh, the information, you know, how, what what you need to transmit, and uh, uh, how do you break up into bits. Right. And uh, second, uh, that is uh, that's a Stanford professor. Second concept is channel capacity or system capacity. Right. So the, the rate of information. But there's also a rate, uh, uh, the, the limit of the capacity. So of course, the third one is the rate of information has to be under your channel capacity. <laughs> Otherwise, your, your signal, the information wouldn't be able to uh, pass through. Right? Makes sense? But he established this from the, from the get-go. And that's that's how he established information here. Not, not some, uh, some abstract concept of state, of controllability, uh, of durability based on uh, an ideal model. That's not engineering. You can, you, you can make all those assumptions in mathematics. Right? But, but if you say this is a control theory and you do not establish the fundamental limitations of what a control system is, what can it do? Then you failed miserably. Not only you failed, you misled generations of students and scholars. It's a, it's a, it's a tragic turn of events, in my view. Right? So you, you, you can only see what's missing in common by comparing uh, common to his idol. This is how you. This is how you uh, uh, think critically. This is how you get away from indoctrination. Right? We are able to do it, but but uh, uh, we have to uh, uh, to struggle because we were used to just passively taking in whatever told to us. Yeah. So that unlearning the business is really important. Yeah. So, uh, he, so he has a theory, he has a theorem, and, and he has very counter in, counterintuitive uh, 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 conclusions. For example, in order to transmit uh, a voice, analog signal, he said it better to digitize it first, then somehow modulate the digital signal onto the uh, analog carrier wave, then decode it at the other end before you convert it back to analog. So his theory established that that's the best way to do it. So that's the connection between the physical world and his uh, abstract world of uh, information. They never, they never separate from each other. It's impossible for Shannon to separate theory from practice. But in control theory, in common control theory, from the very beginning, they're apart. And Shannon was able to do it because Shannon was, was first of all, a first-rate engineer. He knows what's going on in the physical world, as, po as opposed to Kalman, who is a mathematician. How much understanding he has for the physical world is very much uh, uh, up to debate. Okay, so, so this is what the, I just mentioned. You know, very counterintuitive that you want to uh, first digitize the analog signal before you transmit it. Okay. So his theory is a, as a fundamental as the law of physics. So in this sense, he's a scientist. Right, but he's. You know, I, I want to make a, a, a note here. He's not a a, a a a a scholar of natural science. He's a scholar of engineering science. 
or the science of the artificial I showed you the other day, the book, the science of artificial. The human created a communication channel. Human created a communication uh, a need. So this is all, uh, all, all all, all uh, 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 artificial. And he established the law of physics for the artificial system. And that's what we uh, uh, need to have. The, the control system are designed by us. The steam engines are built by humans. What are the fundamental laws? So what we're missing, you know, with the, with, uh, with, uh, with the uh, 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 electrical magnetism, we have Faraday who established the law of physics before uh, uh, Maxwell uh, committed it to uh, mathematical equations. We have two people who are, uh, who are the perfect uh, combination, uh, uh, the, the, the scientific insight, the mathematical rigor. But in, in, in Shannon, he combined the two into one. This is remarkable, right? But Shannon is known as a mathematician because he has to invent, like Newton, like Leibniz, he has to invent new mathematics, introduce new ideas right? in terms of the probabilit probabilistic model right? and uh, has been applied in far ranging branches of mathematics. So he was making original contributions in the field of mathematics itself. I think his PhD was not in double E. His PhD was in the mathematics. You, Daniel, maybe you can also find the Shannon's PhD dissertation. <laughs> right? At MIT. So he, he switched the uh, uh, major if, between the master's thesis and uh, the PhD dissertation. I remember he did it very quickly. Uh, but look at this. Most of all, uh, Shannon was an engineer. Uh, he was an engineer and uh, he, he was a top rated uh, engineer. His theory was motivated by uh, practical engineering problems. Right? In comparison, you, you think about it, what problem motivated the uh, common? Well, the problem motivated the uh, common was uh, an estimation problem. That was a, a filtering problem. And he, did, uh, he, he gave a brilliant solution. But that problem was not proposed by him. It was in the uh, uh, winner's book. The winner already gave a solution. Uh, Chen also gave a solution. But common, uh, uh, Common's uh, technique was better. The solution was simpler. And so to give him all the credit for solving the estimation problem, for solving the filtering problem. But I do not give him credit for <laughs> For establishing control theory, because he was not driven by by this by practical engineering problem. He was not driven by practical engineering problem because he didn't even know what those were. In my opinion, <laughs> okay. So I I put in front of you. On the one hand, you, you see the IEEE control system magazine, so many people say uh, glorious things about him. On the other side, you, you, you have a CSU professor saying something different. What I say carry very, very little weight. What I say will not make it into the uh, IEEE control system magazine, but that doesn't make me believe any less that what I'm telling you is correct. Do, do you do you think, Dr. Gao, that what he did is a form of control? Uh, Eric, you're working on a 5G. Was it Eric or or, or Ibrahim? No, <laughs> partly, yes. On, yes. On, on, on MG, uh, on, on 5G. Uh, uh, you know, this is the 5G embedded in 5G standard are two practical codes pro proved to uh, uh, to achieve a Shannon speed limit. Shannon speed limit. So even today, he has a hand in the 5G business. I have a good question. Can, can you hear me, Dr. Gao? This is all 70 years ago. Right? Common is what? 60 years ago. Hello? 
Can you hear me? How did he do it? By focusing relentlessly on the uh, uh, essential feature of a problem. So he, he was able to uh, grasp the essence of the problem, ignoring all other aspects. And this is so important. The, the ignoring all other aspects was so hard to do. When you, when you formulate in your research, how do you formulate a problem? You, had, you cannot uh, do, uh, examine every aspect of the problem and put it in your formulation. You have to, to take some and leave some. And it's leaving the unimportant ones are, 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 are so important, but so, mis so mysterious. And, and that's takes a genius like Shannon to, to show us. Yeah. It's only after you ignore all the other aspects, the simplicity came through. So in this case, uh, uh, Shannon's work it is the true role of a top rated science. Yeah. And uh, the professor from Stanford uh, uh, remembers his advisor. Again, somebody can find out who uh, his advisor is right? in graduate school. Yeah. Tell him the, 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 to prune the tree, tree of knowledge. I think I mentioned it before. And, uh, instead of doing addition, the top rated uh, scholar will do subtraction. We do a house cleaning. We put the house in order by getting rid of all the unnecessary or misleading theories. A lot of the uh, uh, control theory based on comments, uh, idea need to be cleaned out in my view. Okay. And most of all, this is uh, wh where I think uh, you, you find most uh, uh, impressive is uh, Shannon was able to combine the uh, previous uh, work of engineers and unifying all of them into a one cohesive uh, single uh, tree. And he put, in other words, he, he, he did his uh, uh, cherry picking and he put them all together for the benefits of uh, uh, future generations instead of misleading them. Okay.